guys ready? Good evening. At this time, please silence your cell phones and be advised these proceedings are being recorded for those physically present in the council chambers who desire to address the city council during the meeting. Please complete the request to speak form available at the front entrance of the council chamber and present it to the city clerk. Speakers physically present and participating via Zoom will be called upon. Hold on, I gotta mute this. Yeah. Will be called upon at an appropriate time and each person is allowed three minutes of speaking time. So go ahead and call this meeting in order, August 22nd, 2023 at 6 p.m. I'll be leading the invocation and Ken Henderson will be leading the Pledge of Allegiance. So please join me. Father, we just ask that you uh, be with this council today, God, and just we just turn to you for wisdom. Lord, and I just ask that you be with our city here and our residents and our first responders and our men and women in the military and our staff. And Lord, thank you for letting us weather the storm with no serious damage, God. And, you know, thank you for many blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Councilmember Henderson. So we don't have any AB 2449. Madam City Clerk, can I get roll call, please? Councilmember Henderson. Present. Councilmember Allen. Present. Councilmember Rodriguez Robles. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Wilson. I am here. Mayor Hussey. Present. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. Item A, reordering additional removal of any items from the agenda. Is there any request to remove any items from the agenda? No additions or deletions. All right, Council, we're good. Presentations, none. Uh, consent calendar, the following consent calendar items are expected to be routine and non-controversy. They will be acted upon the City Council at any one time without discussion. Any council member, staff member, or citizen may request removal of the item from the consent calendar for this discussion. Is there any public comment on the consent calendar? No, Mayor. Okay. So do I have a, a motion and a second for the consent calendar items? I'll move the consent calendar. Second. And second. So I move by Councilmember Allen, a second by Councilmember Henderson. Um, City Attorney, you have anything to add on the consent calendar? Not tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to comment on any items not appearing on the regular agenda. Because of restrictions contained by California law, the City Council may not discuss or act on any item not on the agenda, but may briefly respond to statements made and ask a question for clarification. The Mayor may also request a brief, a brief response from staff to question raised during public comment, or may request the matter be agendized for future meetings. So, do we have any public comment? Oh, we do. We have one written comment and two uh, public comments here. The uh, first written comment is just a brief uh, email from a local business owner, uh, Freddie, uh, I'm going to chop apart his last name, Alberi. Um, he stated that in the last two years, he has believed that the city of Grand Terrace has not maintained their friendliness to the local business owners. The staff is not friendly at the counter and are slow to respond to signing in at the counter. Um, the clerk at the counter does not know the answer to questions and it takes too long to get a response when time is of the essence. Permit process is slow and fees are increased. Permit fees have doubled. Um, so he has some concern regarding the increased fees. He had a frustrating experience in shutting down and removal of a business in the Grand Terrace with city staff and city requirements. Appreciates if the council and staff work together to keep existing businesses in the city. Um, he's opening a third business in town and the landlord approval is in place, but staff has not been very helpful. And he just wanted to state about his community um, outreach over the last 20 years. And he would like respect from the community and the same from City Hall. Okay. Can you forward that to the whole council on that one? Yes. And I, I believe the city manager already is aware of that. We discussed this item. All right. Is that it for the public comment? Uh, we have Cindy Bidney. Cindy Bailey.
Hi. Good evening. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the council, I stand before you today to address a pressing concern that affects the very heart of our community. DeBerry Street, this once vibrant pic picturesque street has unfortunately fallen into a state of neglect, marred by litter, overgrowth, and obstruction caused by parked vehicles. As proud residents of this city, it is our shared responsibility to preserve the beauty and functionality of our neighborhoods. Today, I urge you to support the initiative to clean up DeBerry and restore it to its former glory. First and foremost, we must recognize that DeBerry Street was originally intended to be a thoroughfare, and it was deemed illegal to park on the north side. However, over time, this regulation has been overlooked and largely ignored leading to a significant hindrance to the street's overall upkeep. The accumulation of trash and overgrowth has transformed DeBerry Street from a symbol of community pride into a reflection of neglect and apathy. One crucial aspect that cannot be understated is the impact on our city's image and reputation. A clean, well-maintained city speaks volumes up about our pride in our citizens, conversely, neglect and disarray on DeBerry Street send a disheartening message to residents and visitors alike. Another vital point to consider is the safety of our residents. Overgrown vegetation obstructs sightliness and creates an environment that may foster illegal activities, posing a threat to a well -being of the well-being of those living nearby. Moreover, parked cars do not allow the street sweeper to clean effectively, not only contribute to an unsightly appearance, but also impede proper drainage during rainy seasons, potentially leading to flooding and damage to both public and private property. By cleaning up DeBerry Street, we demonstrate a proactive com commitment to improving the quality of our lives. A well-maintained street encourages community engagement, outdoor activities, and enhances the property values for homeowners in, in the area. Investing in an upkeep of DeBerry Street is therefore an investment in overall prosperity and well-being of our city. In conclusion, cleaning up DeBerry Street is not just a matter of aesthetics, it is a symbol of our values, aspirations, commitment to fostering a vibrant and thriving community. By taking action today, we can set an example for other neighborhoods and inspire a citywide movement towards cleaner streets and a brighter future. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Rep. Um, City Manager, can you just let us know or email what plans we have for especially the overgrowth and stuff, if there is a safety concern? Uh, we've trimmed back for the sidelines, and actually last Thursday we wrote over 100 tickets on DeBerry Street okay. for parking during the street sweeping. That's so a work in progress. Yep. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Family. Um, anybody else? Bobby Forbes. Bobby Forbes. Ms. Forbes? <clears throat> Good evening. I want you all to know this is my first outing by myself in seven weeks, and I'm at your council meeting. I'd like to thank the city for cleaning up my neighborhood anyway of the trees that were in the street. I saw your work crew on Tuesday, I think it was, out cleaning up. That was nice. Um, excuse me, yesterday. I apologize. Um, I have no idea what time it is or day it is at this point. I would like to follow up on what Ms. Bidney had to say. I believe when Cargers built those row homes or patio homes, that it was supposed to be short-term parking only in front of them on the north side of DeBerry Street. That's obviously not enforced ever. It's dangerous driving down that street between the middle school at Mount Vernon and Michigan because of all the cars on both sides of the streets, animals, kids, people with their bags and stuff. I know there's not enough parking in the Highlands apartments, or excuse me, the apartments that are there, the Heights. But it is not okay, and so I appreciate your citations. Um, I've recently learned that the new code enforcement officer is code enforcement only, not animal control. I've called many times about a few issues, as I usually do, to City Hall, and no call back. I would also like to address something I've seen pop up. 
I don't know which agenda it's on, but it has to do with the Wallace House on Barton Road and who is going to be occupying it. Last September, staff, I believe, made the change on the CUP to reduce the age of the people that were gonna occupy it. Mr. Henderson was not on council at that time, but the rest were. Mayor Darcy was here at that time. It's very upsetting what I read. I haven't been able to find it since I'm sitting here. You can hear in my voice, I am upset by what I'm reading, and this is gonna change our community. I work really hard to keep the values up. I help the city with things that need to be addressed by sending them to City Hall. It's just not fair to the residents of Grand Terrace what you're allowing to be happening here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Forbes. Anybody else? No, Mayor. Okay, we'll go ahead and close uh, public comment. Public hearing none, finished business none, new business none. Request for future agenda, none. Uh, so City Council communication, uh, Councilmember Henderson. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to start off my comments by complimenting um, city manager and staff, the public works staff in particular, in connection with the cleanup of uh, the storm water that affected most, if not our entire city. The preparation activities outlined by the city manager prior to the storm hitting were well conceived and, and executed to a, to a high level something that we can all be, be thankful for. Saw the staff out there doing their, what they do best and it's uh, certainly appreciated by me. I had several of my neighbors uh, stop by just to mention that they were appreciative of the work done by city staff in that regard. So uh, kudos to city manager and staff that made that happen. My colleague, Mr. Allen had mentioned earlier before the meeting started about information that um, regarding the re regional housing needs assessment, the housing numbers. And it's kind of interesting because I've been having back and forth discussions with some folks I met at the uh, new mayor, new city council um, conference in Sacramento a few months back. And the, 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 the basis of those discussions, which council member Allen noted in his unofficial uh, discussion was that the regional housing needs assessment numbers are based upon population growth. And those numbers, the population growth for the state of California are significantly different than when those numbers, those projections were first uh, initiated and, and developed and implemented. The point of this is that the numbers that we have for the city of Grand Terrace and other communities probably throughout the state are not necessarily accurate as it relates to the development and uh, construction of our housing element. So long and short of it, we've had some discussions. We have a annual conference coming up in uh, September. Um, and there's a, it's too early to call it a working group, but there's some, a few people, about five or six, that want to bring this matter formally to the attention of the league and have the league take appropriate action to ensure that the numbers that we aspire to reach in the regional housing needs assessment will be numbers that reflect what is in essence right now fairly static growth for California. We, the out migration has, has, has approximated the same level as the in migration and so those numbers need to be taken into account with respect to the regional housing needs assessment as opposed to numbers that were in place um, a decade ago. So if this group shows promise, I will report back to the council and ask for appropriate uh, policy direction uh, as it relates to the, uh, the discussions that we have to date. My last comment revolves Blue Mountain Park. Uh, I had a couple of my daily walk meetings with constituents, our constituents, and uh, this is anecdotal, of course, and um, nothing's actually in stone, but 
I, I've yet to come across someone who is supportive of that park. And so I, I, I mentioned that to my colleagues, and to staff only so that when we do move forward, uh, we, we do so understanding uh, that the, uh, the challenges are fairly significant. I think they can be overcome, quite frankly, but um, right now it's a blank slate for folks. Uh, one of the members of the community that spoke to me lives across uh, Palm on Paradise and believes that that park will have an impact on um, his dwelling in his neighborhood. Uh, another, I think I mentioned to the, this to the council earlier in another meeting, another many uh, uh, constituent indicated that he felt that park would look like Mount Rubido in the city of Riverside. So um, just a word to the wise in that respect. Uh, I think that uh, with the right outreach and public education approach that assuming funds are available when they, when they do come, that we can make that a successful venture of the, of the city. Um, so that's, that's my hope going forward. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Allen. <clears throat> Thanks, Mayor. And um, I want to thank Councilman Member Henderson for his comments. I mean, he pretty much said a lot of things I was going to say, so I'll just say that's what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, you know, city, the city did a good job. City managed you. Well done. Staff, well done. Public works, well done. Um, I'd like to thank, you know, whenever I was going and filling, I went over to the sandbag pile um, and there wasn't any more sand, but there were some bags there and I was kind of scrounging around in the dirt and then a, a resident from Darwin Street drove up and he said, I've got some mortar sand over my house. Come on over, you can have all you want. And then somebody else drove up and they were wanting some sand, he told them. And so we all just went over to his house and we started filling up sandbags. And, mm -hmm. and I just, residents in Grand Terrace, I just love them. You know, they just wanted to help. They got everybody's back. They got each other's back. <clears throat> and um, so I'd like to, you know, thank uh, Sal on, on uh, Darwin Street for his uh, neighborly actions there. And, um, yeah, that would be interesting about the arena numbers and that, how that's going to all unfold, you know. I can't imagine why anybody would want to continue to promote, you know, increasing the requirements whenever they can't justify it. Um, so, with that said, um, I'm glad that we did well in the storm, and um, I'll, that's all I have, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you. Councilman Robles? Um, yeah, I just also... Um want to ditto everything that um, Councilman uh, Henderson said as far as the staff. Everything was very proactive. And I was fortunate because um, <clears throat> I didn't need a sandbag as I thought I would. And I was <laughs> at an angel game, so I couldn't get here soon enough. But anyway, so um, Skang had the special meeting on the arena numbers, and they came out with a, a solution, exactly what you guys are talking about, and I'll send that all to you in an email. That's all I have. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I toured the city you know, right in the middle of the, of the hottest point of the rains, and we did really well with what we have. But we have a problem. There's no doubt about it. We've got a ton of water running east to west uh, on the south end of the city. And however, our forefathers managed to grant approvals for projects that didn't handle the dry lane. Now you're supposed to have a single dry lane everywhere you go, uh, even for a 500-year storm, which is the, considered a no event. Uh, I don't know how they justified it, but they did, and so we're cleaning up the mess. And as the city manager has already experienced in the last year, we've had lots of messes to clean up from the prior administrations. Um, it was uh, bordering on criminal the way that they handled 
uh, what they had for uh, life and safety difficulties that should have been planned for. And uh, I, I really think that uh, it's a shame that we didn't have a better uh, helmsman at that point, uh, whether it was the city council or whether it was the uh, city manager at the time. But we we're working hard to, to get our stuff squared away as much as possible and hopefully uh, with the photos and, and the evi other evidence that we have, uh, including some uh, early studies that Lewis managed to do for us, uh, we should be able to try to make a little bit of progress in relation to road and infrastructure repairs in that area uh, before we start loading some, ex some other impacts onto, on top of it. So um, we did well, but it's going to take some planning and some money to be able to fix what's screwed up in those areas. Uh, we're just fortunate that uh, our staff did so well in maintaining what we have and that bags were put where they could be. A lot of places where the water was overrun in the curb and the sidewalk <clears throat> and the front yard. So uh, that's not what it's supposed to be and it's certainly not supposed to be no dry lanes in any, any part of the city. We have to think about, you know, uh, say, uh, first responder access. And uh, <clears throat> if you don't believe that, just listen in the mornings and the afternoons when the ambulances start their runs all over the city. You know, we just, if we can't get to them, it's gonna be difficult to do, do the service that they expect. Uh, I went to a, uh, a BIA sponsored and San Bernardino County ch chapter actually water uh, conference that was held over at uh, one of the hotels over there in Ontario near the convention center. And I distributed a copy of each one of the uh, uh, schedule activities and, and a rundown on each one of the speakers. From a, from a macro standpoint, these uh, are the people that are at the top of their game. Uh, the, one of the first speakers was uh, Susan Kennedy from Cadiz Incorporated, and they, Cadiz has a huge aquifer uh, that I guess nobody else knows about, and they are repurposing a gas line to be able to run water that will connect with the California water resources uh, lines. And uh, the, because this is replaceable water, uh, apparently they're able to do that without uh, sacrificing any service to their people. In the meantime, they're also, uh, there's a little bit of uh, treatment that has to happen in order for some of their domestic use to go through. And so they're actually, uh, they bought the company that was the treatment company that was handling the trace amounts of arsenic that was in the water. And so they so far have uh, managed to provide water where there wasn't water, domestic water service, to, to some of their homes over there in Cadiz area. And if you're not familiar where Cadiz is, it's over in the Mojave Desert, where you'd expect the last place to be where there's an, a, a huge aquifer that's approachable. Uh, there were people like uh, Robin Noeth, who was uh, National Corps, uh, also an apartment complex outfit. Uh, Kathleen Peroni, uh, Pieroni from the Inland Empire Utilities Agency. Heather Dyer from the San Bernardino Valley Municipal Water District. She's the gen GM. Dr. Mar Dr. Mark Gray from the Building Industry Association who subbed for a couple of people. But by far the most uh, informative individual and fortunately was sitting at the same table I was at got to serve him some tea. And uh, he was Dr. Marty Ralph of the Scripps Institute of Oceanography at UC San Diego Center for Western Weather and Water Extremes. Incredible. Uh, knows just about everything there is to know about, about the way the water returns back to the ocean and how much water we, how much fresh water we actually have available and some of the opportunities that are out there in order to be able to capture that water, so on. Anyway, it was a uh, 
it was held between eight and one o'clock and I've never had so much material, so much information packed into my brain at one time. <laughs> it was terrific. Also had an opportunity to uh, meet for lunch uh, with uh, Mark Cloud, who is our uh, SCE uh, governmental relations uh, uh, representative. And he did tell me that Edison has actually claimed responsibility for the Paradise Fire which was interesting. He also told me about some of the things that they're in the process of doing to try to inhibit any chances of wildfires. And uh, with the new influx of the electric cars, as well as the amount of demand that they have now, uh, and the uh, problem with the fact that uh, we've got a lot of, of uh, solar that's feeding onto the grid, they've had to do some uh, enormous adjustments, SCE has, in order to be able to handle that feed. Uh, and of course, have, they've had, they're having to uh, upgrade a lot of uh, cabling and uh, different facilities to be able to handle uh, what's gonna happen in relation to the electric vehicles. And so it was, a, it was an interesting opportunity to sit and listen to cutting edge information from Edison. And uh, uh, he's open for, for phone calls, so anytime you wanna to talk to him about stuff. Uh, he also informed me that at this point, they're gonna have a little bit of difficulty uh, receiving the power that's gonna happen from the brownout station that's coming because they don't have any facilities to receive it. So I thought that was interesting from our standpoint and it should be something that we want to dig into. Anyway, that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. So, um, yes, you know, thank you staff for, you know, sacrificing your weekend and, you know, being here and, and you know, thank God we didn't have any major things. I think the only major thing happened was uh, my roof leaked, my neighbor's roof leaked and my other neighbor's roof had a leak. So. Apparently the contractor decided to have all the roof leaks at one time because the homes were built all at the same time. So yeah. anyway, I went to, a, I was invited to the county, uh, their board meeting and by a uh, chair, uh, Supervisor Rao. And, um, but before that, I got to sit during the round table at, you know, eight o'clock this morning and they had a visitor, Mayor Chong from, I'm gonna mess his name, Taiyong City, Taiwan. It's a sister city for San Bernardino. And um, of course, it's really nice to read about their city. It's like got 10,000 ponds. And I kept thinking about Minnesota and 10,000 lakes. And then it's called a city, a uh, piece of garden city, paradise of garden. So, um, but it was really neat to talk about global, uh, growing global partnerships and the partnerships and then uh, mutual uh, thing is the, the infrastructure, building that, but one of the biggest problems they have is they don't have any more land to build anything. And where San Bernardino County has a lot of land, and Ms. Rollins probably knows about this with SBCTA, so then they were talking about the, the economic developer at the county was talking about um, how the racetrack in Fontana is gonna be down to a half a mile. One, to get more spectators, you know, instead of waiting the two and a half miles, you know, zooming around. And then with the extra them condensing it, they're gonna have a lot more land available and I guess a lot of warehouses and infrastructures going in there. So they're pretty much talking about how we're gonna be one big giant hub, how you know this county's gonna be, you know, a lot of railroads gonna be coming through, the needles and, and Barstow and and pretty much, yeah, we'll be one big warehouse coming through here and a lot of uh, traffic, truck traffic. So it was just interesting seeing that and then um, being there during the board meeting, so. That's all I have. Uh, City Manager, you have any communications? Yes, thank you. Actually, I'd like to thank the council for during the storm. You, you actually had one of the toughest jobs is to step back and let us do our job. <laughs> and um, in, in those events, it's really easy to want to dive in and help manage and get involved, and that's very difficult to step back. So thank you for doing your job well in this process. Also, thank you to, to law enforcement and fire who were there the whole time. Um, you know, we, we dropped over 20 yards of sand and over a thousand sandbags and 
we had our guys hauling sand up until about four o'clock sorry, Sunday afternoon. So um, it, it, it went as fast as we brought it. And actually to Council Member Wilson's comment, one of the reasons that we paved the east-west roads first in our paving project is to facilitate that drainage and to help that water run off as quickly as possible. It's not the solution, but it helped mitigate some of that damage. So we are asking for the community's patience and a little forbearance as we go through cleanup. We have trees down, trees down in the park. There's um, Richard Rollins Park is closed for the next couple of days. We have some trees that are ready to topple. Those are coming down. Um, we're picking up limbs and branches and still, still have several days of cleanup left. Um, one of the other things, the really smart city managers, they ordered the street sweepers last week to come this week to come this week the rest of us we ordered them um, yesterday so we'll be getting some street sweeping to help clean up the debris that's in the street over the next week as well we have our crews doing some hand cleanup in the really bad the really bad areas um, we had one storm drain that failed it's a small failure and we have crews out there we'll be digging that out and working on that failure so all in all I think it was a, a very good drill and a, a great practice for all of us for when when something really bad happens. And we're very fortunate that, that everybody worked together on this. On a separate note, our dumpster out here, people are really engaged and using that and filling it on a daily basis. For those of you that are not here and watching, I, I ask that if the dumpster is full, please don't overfill it. Please don't keep throwing stuff on top. It takes time and effort for us to crunch it all down. If it's over the top, they, the hauler won't haul it, then we have to hand unload it. And please don't leave stuff around there. There'll be an empty dumpster. We empty it Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So in a couple of days, there'll be an empty one. Come back, dump it in then. So if, if you can help us with that, we'd really appreciate it. And that is all, thank you. Thank you. So our last time, we're gonna recess the closed session. Closed session's gonna, one and two, public employee performance evaluation pursuant to section 54957B for a city manager and city attorney. So if you don't, if you're not here when we come back, have a blessed night and God bless. You know, my roof leaks too. All right, we'll go ahead and reconvene open session. Uh, we discussed the public employment performance evaluation and pursuit of section 54957 B1 for the title city manager and city attorney. The staff was given directions. Uh, city attorney, you have anything to add? No, Mr. Mayor. That covers it. All right. So we'll go ahead and um, close it. And we'll go ahead and close our council meeting uh, until the next regular council city council meeting will be held Tuesday, September 12, 2023 at 6 p.m. Any requests to have an item placed on a future agenda? I must be made in writing and submitted to the city clerk's office and the request will be processed in accordance with city council procedures. Thank you, everybody, have a good night.